How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. And this is Eli, and you are watching or listening to Commander Cafe. Today, we're looking at my Gideon the Black Blade Oathbreaker deck. In flavor with Gideon's invulnerability, you're basically running Wrath Dot deck. So, Vorthos win? Yay? Yay! Speaking of Wrath Dot deck, the signature spell of this deck, you guessed it, Wrath of God. <laughs> it just adds to the fun of running every mono white Wrath effect that I own in a single deck. By the way, yes, I'm aware. No one wants to play Oathbreaker with me. Don't break an arm jerking yourself off! So, in this <laughs> deck, we run eight <laughs> Wrath effects that are not the signature spell. Uh, some of them include things like Fumigate, uh, Fell the Mighty, Austere Command, uh, Dusk and Dawn, <laughs> etc. Uh, but those are all very similar. Pay a couple white, pay some colorless, and destroy all the creatures, destroy some other thing. So, we have eight board wipes in the deck that are not Wrath of God. Uh, basically anything that says destroy all creatures, you can run it in this deck. My list is fairly flexible with that. After that, we have some protection spells to save our own creatures. Uh, some of them include things like Selfless Spirit, which is just a 2-1 for 2 that allows you to fl uh, sacrifice it and creatures you control gain indestructible, as well as a new one from uh, Ravnica for Unbreakable Formation. For 2 and a white, at instant speed, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn, and if you cast it during your main phase, put a 1-1 counter on each of those creatures and they gain Vigilance, which is great for attacking right after you clear the board. Then we have Rootborn Defenses. Two and a white. Populate. Do you have any tokens in this deck? A handful. Um, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. And then we also have the big boy himself, Teferi's Protection. Two and a white. Instant speed. Until your next turn, your life total can't change, and you have protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out. Exile, Teferi's Protection. I have considered putting that as the signature spell, just for multiple uses. However, it's just so fun wiping the board. Satisfying, too. Don't break an arm jerking yourself off! Keep your satisfaction to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on. We have some card draw spells. You don't have many. Yeah. You don't have good. There, there's nothing good about card draw in white. <laughs> for example, we have Howling Mine. To give everyone draw spells. We have Palace Sentinel to give yourself the monarch and then probably lose it the next turn and you have to spend the rest of the game just to try and draw cards attacking whoever is the monarch. And we have Dawn of Hope which I have an entire life gain package in the deck specifically to draw cards off of Dawn of Hope <laughs> as well as just life gain is decent in this format. Uh, after that, you have Ramp, which is... Not Ramp Cards, Ramp Card. <laughs> ramp Card. There are a couple others, but <laughs> this is this is just the one that I felt needed to be brought up. No, I, I'm believing this is the only one you have. Um, you have a Smothering Tide, so why don't you tell us about it? I think it's the greatest white spell they've printed <laughs> in a long time. You may not agree. But you, you mean ever? <laughs> I, I'm of the opinion this card is more broken in Commander and Oathbreaker than Paradox Engine. Like it, it's like it's a kill on sight card. <laughs> so Smothering Tithe, in case you haven't heard of it or seen it in your playgroups, is three. I want to join your playgroups. <laughs> <laughs> three and a white for an enchantment that says whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two mana. If the player doesn't, which it's fairly often that they don't, you create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color. So basically, screw all you guys with all your card draw. <laughs> I particularly hate this because I like to draw like seven cards a turn and I don't like paying the tax. 
Oh, hey, if you're drawing seven cards per turn, you probably should have something like 14 mana. I should, but you do have 14 mana. <laughs> if you draw 14 cards. Yeah. It'll be fine. It's perfectly fine. After that, we have some just fun, casual life gain. Uh, Elixir of Immortality, so you can keep reusing your rasts and your creatures that you wipe out with your rasts in case you don't have a protection spell. As well as some fun stuff. So you have a bit of a prison here with Authority of the Consuls. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under opponent's control, you gain one life. Um, one of my favorite cards, actually. I like this quite a bit in a lot of my decks. Um, slowing opponents down and getting incidental life gain is nice. And it's not usually a big enough threat to get removed. And next we have Suture Priest. One in a white for a 1-1 one, one cleric. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain one life. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you may have that player lose one life. Goodbye, token strategies. Woohoo! <laughs> so, speaking of you bringing up that I have some stacks cards in this deck, <laughs> we have Bay, one of my actual favorite cards because I'm currently putting together a uh, Death and Taxes for Modern deck. Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. One in a white for a 2-1 human soldier with first strike and non-creature spells cost one more to cast. And then you also have Kataki Wars Rip... Bleh, bleh. Wars Wage, because tongue twisters are tough. Legendary Creature Spirit, 2-1. All artifacts have, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this artifact unless you pay one. But it's okay if people have to pay a little extra for their spells. Considering that I also have Eidolon of Rhetoric, which means that each player can only cast one spell per turn. So, it all works out anyways. <laughs> it's just fine. I've always kind of wanted to build a Kataki commander deck. He really does seem fun, especially our particular playgroup has a lot of artifacts, so it's just a fun way to finish off the game. And then as far as win cons, while there's a few like token generators in the deck that make a handful of angels or soldiers and stuff like that. Really the main way to win with this deck is you take Gideon. You take Blackblade Reforged. Forthos win! And you equip that to him. And you smack people in the face until they die. There's not really much else to it besides just wrath the board, keep it clean, smack in with your indestructible Gideon, he has a little bit of removal on him. Uh, he can give Vigilance, Indestructible, and something else to your creatures. And yeah, otherwise he's just a nice 4-4 four four that doesn't die too easily during your turn. Now the real question is, do you have near-death experience? As much as I would like to. I've been trying not to buy too much for Oathbreaker, because it's still kind of a new format, and it's just questionable how much we'll be playing it as opposed to commander which is our favorite format Forthos fail very true <laughs> so speaking of all of that do you have any recommendations realistically card draw definitely needs some improvement in this deck what would you suggest comment below and see show us what you got um otherwise <laughs> Uh, like and subscribe. Otherwise, stay in touch. Uh, hit that bell icon for notifications whenever we post more. And that's... Like, favorite, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Commander Cafe.